Hey guys. Hi everybody. We are getting really excited for our Pacific Crossing and we thought that with everything that's been going on, we would do a sort of sit down and talk to you about it because it's just impossible to film everything. And we've been filming a lot, but um, there's just so much that goes into a Pacific, yeah. <laughs> a Pacific crossing or any ocean crossing. Um, yeah, that we thought it would be uh, just fun and helpful and yeah, informative. Maybe informative. Yep. Yeah, to do, to do a little different format this week. So maybe let's start with where we are. Yeah. Which is La Cruz. Good one. <laughs> which is in Banderas Bay. Uh, the main city is Puerto Vallarta. But the reason we are in La Cruz is because of this is where the hub is for all the people crossing the Pacific this year. So there's weekly seminars, there's weather updates, and it's kind of a buzz because everyone is getting ready to cross an ocean. So there's a lot of boat work going on and people are just excited. Yeah. So La Cruz <laughs> is basically just a little bit north of Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. And um, we're in a marina, which has been amazing. The marina here is great because the anchorage is kind of rolly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's just a big group of people that are crossing too. I think there's 200 boats that are crossing this year. They're not all here, but a big portion of them are here. So we've been making a lot of new friends and connections, but also we've been able to attend these seminars. And yep. the seminars have had really good topics like, um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about them, but weather routing, um, disaster kind of worst yeah, case worst scenario, scenario stuff, all different medical. They've had doctors come in. Um, and so we really are happy to be here, but there's also one other reason why we're here and that has to do with the actual physical crossing and the weather. Yeah, so you guys may be confused why we went to South the Bar, the Navidad, and then back up. Um, the reason we went to Bar is because it had a protected lagoon that we could do boat work in and I needed to deal with my passport that was expiring, so I had to go deal with the immigration office close to there. Right. Uh, but even though it seems counterintuitive to go north before you cross an ocean heading southwest, but the way the weather set up here is, is that you need the northerlies coming at down to Sea Cortez, down the coast of Baja, to push you to the trade winds, which is near Clarion Island, about 600 miles away from here. If you left from Barra de Navidad, you're basically motoring into a wind hole. The winds, that northwesterly flow coming down to Sea Cortez, does not reach uh, down in Barra de Navidad. So we headed back north in order to be with the people crossing, but also to catch the weather out of here. Yeah, so when we leave, our angle uh, is going to be a nice, perfect little line to get us uh, out around the Baja and into the Northeast Trades. The Northeast Trades. All these seminars we've been going to, sometimes twice a week, but at least every Friday there's a happy hour at uh, PV Sailing, and this guy Mike runs like a weather update for us. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, it's a little bit of a weird year. We're going from El Nino and very quickly transitioning to La Nina. So it's kind of a weird setup this year. Um, there has not been a viable window yet, and this is being filmed on March 27th. So typically people have left for crossings, but this year has been kind of strange. Um, primarily in the Southern Hemisphere, uh, the trades have just not built in there. So you might be able to catch a ride down to the equator and get across the doldrums, but right now there's not the wind to carry you in the Southern Hemisphere the rest of your way to the Marquesas. Correct. And we learned, you know, even a lot more about uh, the weather and strategy for crossing the Pacific um, that we will share more on. Um, but it's definitely a little bit more strategic than I think we anticipated, uh, just in the sense that yeah, there's it's, there's these... It's much more complex. Yeah. Um, I think when we crossed the Atlantic, it was trade wind conditions, and we didn't have to go across the equator, so we didn't have to go through the intertropical convergence zone, or like basically that's the area of dead air where the two trade winds meet, between the northern, hem northern and southern hemisphere. Uh, this one is going to be more complicated. It basically has four chapters to it. Number one is getting out of here, so taking some northerlies down to Baja, and then we hit the northeast trades, and then we at some point have to cross over to doldrums where the two trade wind belts meet, and that's an area of no wind. And it has to be strategic that you get through the shortest part to save your fuel, but you can't go too far because if you go too far, the southeasterly trades will become beating up to the Marquesas. Instead of a downwind run, if you go too far west, you wind up uh, punching into it for the last week, which wouldn't be fun. So it's basically four distinct chapters of the crossing. Really, really learned a lot, and we will go into detail about all that stuff. Um, maybe not before we cross, but uh, yeah, we'll be certainly in some capacity. Yeah, we're going to continue to create content while we're out there. Um, we haven't actually decided 
with what kind of regularity. <laughs> yeah, what form is going to be. Yeah. Uh, we um, will certainly be updating our patrons quite frequently. Yeah. Uh, so Starlink will be on daily, but we're just unsure, you know, how much long form content or what that's going to shape is going to take. So we'll be busy crossing an ocean. But um, yeah, yeah. yeah there'll definitely be updates on Patreon. And yeah, we'll we'll have to see because we're gonna turn Starlink on once a day. It's quite expensive to actually keep Starlink on when you leave the uh, the land mass. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, we also have a sat phone, so it's not like we won't be connected when Starlink is on. I almost I almost but... don't know how I feel about Starlink. Like it was such a cool experience mm -hmm. when we crossed oceans and other times and did really long passages. Like that feeling of disconnection. And the yeah. fact that Starlink will be going on daily to grab weather, it's going to be, you know, that means you're inundated with messages and texts and you're not getting yeah. the same full, like, ocean crossing experience as it used to go. As it was for us last time. Um, but like our last ocean uh, crossing, I'm going to be keeping a journal. Uh, I've done that for both of our passages and our last two big passages. And uh, it was really cool to go back and reflect um, on that experience. There's just so much that you feel and that you're experiencing but that you forget kind of in detail uh, so I'll have that and um, I'll I think I'm gonna share some of that with you guys too so get the inner thoughts on what an ocean crossing feels like exactly okay now to keep us on schedule because we are such schedule oriented people not really um, okay La Cruz so what have we been filling the last weeks with well, the first thing, which has taken quite a lot longer, honestly, even than I ever could have imagined, is ordering spares and figuring out, yeah, I guess just like what we need, yeah, because we, yeah. on a boat, I mean, you could carry three or four or five of everything, right? Because everything eventually is going to break, but we can't carry everything. So I guess Gotta strategically, pick and, choose. pick and choose. I think yeah. I spent a solid like two weeks ordering parts. Yeah. Um, and it's yeah. quite a quite a long, long list now. Like for the engine, we got a lot of things like injectors, starter motor, raw water pump, fresh water pump, lift pumps. Um, so we have like quite a sort of series of spares that we have for the engine. We wound up ordering a totally brand new autopilot drive because we just mm -hmm. we didn't trust our old ones. We replaced them for a reason. So we decided to have two fresh brand new ones on board. We're also carrying a spare computer, we're carrying a spare compass, and a spare rotor feedback unit, so we actually have like two complete autopilots on board. Uh, and not to mention we have a battle-borne battery sitting uninstalled, in case we had some other electrical issue, we could run it off that. Yep. Um, Another big one is we did our rig inspection uh, when we first got in here, a few days after we got into La Cruz, and we discovered we had a broken block. From that crazy ride up, that crazy 30 knot thing we beat into. We've noticed block broken. Uh, they're all the same blocks, all the same age, all the same wear. So uh, that was another thing we ordered. Like all the blocks on our boat are getting replaced right now. And I will show you guys. Because I have. <laughs> block right here. There's <laughs> blocks all over. The boat is very chaotic right now. There is stuff everywhere that we haven't put away yet. And so we have a pile of blocks, Harkin blocks. So we ended up getting. I brought 13 of these down with me um, because, yeah, again, we realized, hey, they're all the same age. Let's replace them all. Um, yeah, it's just not something we want to deal with on crossing. Like, the old adage is that an hour spent on shore is like a day at sea. So when something fails, you're going to spend an entire 24 hours trying to fix what was an hour of maintenance when you're at the dock. So mm -hmm. we've been trying to take that to heart and just, you know, get as our hands on, get our hands on as much as everything as we can on the boat. So it hasn't been a ton of new things, there's a couple new things, but it's been a lot of just like touching of things and checking yeah. on things and just is everything working and just fine tooth comb going through the yeah. rigging, going through the engine. And uh, the other thing that came out of the rigging was the gooseneck. Yeah, I found I found a loose gooseneck that the guys here were able to help me to. We were able to put a bushing in there and get everything realigned and change the bolt. Um, I found another loose bale on the boom I got to fix when I was changing the block because I was touching the, the bale. And so I was like, well, that's a little loose, so I have to get bigger hardware for that. So it's like the more you look, the more you're yeah. placed, the more you find. Yeah, uh, and some things we knew about, like uh, the anchor chain, we wanted to take a couple of the links, out. the links out, which we did. So we like had that in our mind, but then there's been, so, you know, we've kind of been toggling back and forth between the to-do list we've been making for the past nine months of like little things here and there we want to do, plus going to these seminars and learning about new things or thinking about new things and incorporating that into our uh, to-do by through the checks. So yes, a lot so of that has, you know, really been because we're here and we're also 
hanging out with people and we're all talking about the same things like what we're doing what we're looking for sharing ideas and a ton a, a ton has come out of that like we feel yeah. way more prepared for this ocean yeah. crossing than we did for our last i mean even two. like the weather setups like i don't know how you would you can read the Cornell books, you can read the Pacific Crossing Guides. The way they're discussing the setup to get out of here uh, is definitely knowledge I wouldn't have had just from reading. So mm -hmm. it's important to be in the right place at the right time with people who have been routing boats across the Pacific for years from this from this location. So you get the real local knowledge, and that's really a lot of part of sailing. We do use a lot of local knowledge, like getting mm -hmm. out on the streets, getting out in the bars and meeting people. Like That's all actually very important to the networking when you show up in a town like this. Like that's how we found out about the seminar. It's just, it's, you know, yeah. you just need to get out and meet people and get that local intel, so. Yeah, which just to take a, a, a slight detour here, um, the other incredible thing about La Cruz is that it's a lot of fun. <laughs> There's a lot of old friends here and we have new friends and uh, two of our friends manage a bar uh, called Lusty, Lusty on Land. And that's kind of been like the, like the spot it's the hub for all of us like you know you go there and you'll always have a friend like some yeah. sailors are hanging out at some point in the afternoon or evening yeah so we've been like really riding that work hard play hard thing like to the max in both extremes um which is awesome because you can imagine there's a lot of stress frankly that goes into planning something like this and uh yeah it's a <laughs> it's a great way to relieve stress and just <laughs> get excited because the other thing I think that is really challenging for a lot of people, including our, ourselves, but we have some experience with this, it, is just the fact that we're, every day, we're working towards a goal that's in the distance, and we don't even know the, the day we're leaving yet, because it's by the weather. We can't even say, hey, we've got 15 days left, or whatever. You know, we have a general idea, but um, really to stay super motivated for such an extended period of time, and for us, you know, we thought we would be crossing last year, so it's been a long time yeah. coming. Eight month refit, and I feel like the last two months we haven't stopped. Like since Barra, like we haven't. Yeah. Hasn't been it, an off day really. And it's not easy, especially the projects <clears throat> that are just boring and hard, like doing the winches. You know, it's just like it, you can just drag your feet on those kinds of things. So having people here that are all in the same boat, you know, we're not diving, we're not doing cruising things, we're just doing boat things. Um, yeah, it's super super motivating to talk about what the the next yeah, we three to six months we sometimes just throw like. on like a video of like the South Pacific and we're hanging out on one of the boats just to like <laughs> yeah. we're going there we're really yeah. going even though every day feels like Groundhog Day <laughs> yeah the other day we had um, Ruth and Garrett over um, from Salt and Tar and we, we actually put up a video from our COVID time I don't know if you guys have seen those videos but the, uh, the whole Bahamas TTYC TTYC so just like keeping you know the dream alive the clear that, water like, anchored boats yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like, it's, like oh man it's I can't coming. wait because a lot of us like we've been in Mexico for a Jeez. long time so it doesn't even feel foreign and you know we love that thrill and the experience of new culture and new things and we absolutely love Mexico but it again it just doesn't feel like Darn a anymore. travel experience and a lot of people that are here are in that same that same boat so yeah, yeah super fun to do those things with friends what else so the other thing is not sure if people know this but once we leave the states we are no longer going to be basically using the same power nope 110 volts is gone once we leave North America Everywhere is 220 volts um, with various plugs, so it's a little bit of a complicated situation. Um, and there'll be an episode on this as well. But one of the other new things we were just ordered and got down here is two uh, 50 amp Victron chargers mm -hmm. that could take multi voltages. So they could go from like 90 volts to 260. Uh, so what we're doing is basically building a new battery charging system that will allow us to run our air conditioning and all our 110 appliances off our inverter. But that inverter charger function, the charger function will be no longer useful because that's 110 volts and it can only take 110. Uh, the new chargers I bought could feed 100 amps to our batteries and they could take multi-voltages. Uh, they're also good because if there's a spike from the shore power, which we've had trouble with, uh, they could absorb all sorts of voltages. They're basically like an isolation transformer. Like They could attack from 90 to 260, so they're not going to burn anything up if there's a little fluctuation from the dock, which we've had issues with in Mexico. I'm sure when we get into Asia, there'll be power issues. You know, Some of these places aren't as robust power grids as the U.S., so uh, we've melted wires from that a couple times. So I'm glad to have these things taking the load of the AC coming in the boat. Yes. Um, so yeah, we will be sharing more about that. Down More the line, to come on that, that when I figure been, it out. That was probably 
two straight days it's, or maybe three of just talking to our, even my our smart friends um <laughs> our smart electric electrically <laughs> inclined yeah. friends and figuring out a game plan for that because it's complex it's just the circuit yeah. protections you need and all it's just it's not as simple as just running an extension cord yeah. you could be but we feel safer doing it the proper way so yeah. because to make matters more complex of course there's all this stuff like what should we do what can we do what do we have how do we work with and then there's the cost right because for everything and anything we do on the boat i mean you if you have an unlimited um, unlimited amount of money that just opens every pathway but obviously yeah, we, don't. we don't so <laughs> we're trying to find the most economical way that we can safely convert um yeah so that's been a big one okay what do we have so the other the other really big thing actually that has gone on in the last week is I flew home to Arizona for a very, very quick trip to do my last oncology appointment before we go. So after having breast cancer, uh, I need to do every six months uh, various checkups. And one of them is for blood work just to yeah, make sure nothing's metastasized and everything's good. And that that you know that was a really big thing that we've been thinking about for yeah, the last few months. Yeah, it's felt like a major hurdle to me. Like yeah, hurdle. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess I didn't expect anything, but that could really derail all the work and all the effort. Yeah, so we were, never know. I, so we were we super got, stoked that she got good numbers. <laughs> we got good numbers. That is the the huge announcement. That's probably the big. That's probably the biggest one, really. Yeah. I mean, that's the the other stuff's yeah. all a joke. Huge load off. Um, and <clears throat> the other thing that was nice about going back to Arizona is I was able to pick up all the spares we've been talking about. So I came back with two big suitcases of stuff uh, and like 130 pounds or something like that yeah yeah I was 130 pounds I maxed out the two checked bags and then I, my backpack was so heavy super happy about that and in terms of going forward with my health full disclosure uh, we don't really have an exact plan we know you know that I need to go to a doctor yeah, we're gonna make months. sure the checks are done we're we gonna make sure the checks are done we just don't know if it's gonna be flying back to the US or is it I mean yeah. flying to New Zealand flying to you know some other high standard care place with a high standard of care yes in true calico calico sky style and I know this might be hard to believe but again this is true we don't actually know where we're going so yeah. we, we know we're going to the Marquesas in, the French, in French Polynesia that's our first stop and we know kind of the islands that we're going to be hitting in French Polynesia so we want to be in the Tuamotos which will be our second stop and then we're going to be going to Tahiti briefly Tonga yeah and then after Tonga we don't know Fiji we, we, we haven't maybe. decided whether we're going north or south yet yeah, so basically, um, in terms of weather strategy, the big overall encompassing consideration in cruising in general and in ocean passages and everything is the seasons. And so if you've been watching our videos for a while, you know uh, we were on the east coast of the States for a long time, constantly going north and south and north and south to get out of hurricane season. So in the other hemisphere, we have cyclone season. Uh, but, you know, because we're going to be going to the equator and be close to the equator, um, you know, which side of the equator you're on dictates, like, where you need to be when, based on the seasons. Yeah. So, in other words, we're leaving in April, and come October, that's cyclone season. Uh, but, if we go north of the equator, we can potentially go into winter there go into their and then, winter and then, there's, and then there's no cyclone so and i guess it's one thing we also opted not to do the long stay visa um so oh, that's, th a, that's, a, that's another yeah, thing like i, I we haven't even filmed anything about that but we i basically made a spreadsheet mapping out the days of our passages uh and it just seems like the real decision point is if you want to sail back to the marquesas and spend a year there and, the, and what we were hearing from our friends is the water's not so clear, it's kind of buggy, it's rolly, like you want to see the Marquesas for a couple weeks, do the hikes, but it's not an ideal cruising ground to go spend four months hiding from cyclones. So once we realized we didn't want to stay in French Polynesia, because we could only stay in the Marquesas, which is safe from hurricanes, you can't stay further west, and you have to beat your way back up, uh, we are now at a decision tree whether we go south to New Zealand to get out of the cyclone risk, or we go north into like Micronesia. So. I think we'll know more how we feel once we, you know, start making those hops and those those crossings. Like so, 
Yeah, but a yeah, lot, a lot of people, I'd say the majority of people, uh, go south to New Zealand, and that's kind of the where they hide. I think it's more tried and true. Yeah. If the boat needs a refit again, New Zealand's a great place to get parts and stuff like that. So I guess it really depends, like how you're feeling with all the sailing, how the boat's doing. So there is a lot of unknowns. Uh, and a lot of people are just doing Pacific Crossing as a one-time thing, but it's kind of our life, so we don't, you know, we're, we keep living on a boat, so if we want to just continue into Asia, we can. Like, it's not sort of like a one-goal mission to get across the Pacific. A lot of boats yeah. are going for sale in New Zealand. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I'm starting to fade a little bit. Okay. I just need to, I need to re-up. <laughs> <laughs> Someone I'm, party a little too I'll hardy? i back. I need some energy. <laughs> so I have become a huge fan of Magic Mind. What it is, is a combination of different ingredients that help you focus and give you an energy boost um, without the crash. So you guys know I love my caffeine um, and I do love coffee, but uh, that afternoon slump is the worst and I get that so bad with coffee. So Magic Mind has really changed my life. It's so good. Why it works, L-theanine, only partially blocks the neuroreceptors in your brain that tell you you're tired. So it's almost like a time-released caffeine. It comes from matcha. Caffeine, on the other hand, completely blocks those neurotransmitters. So when it dies out, when the chemical's gone, you just crash. The other ingredients that I love are bacoma, ashwagandha, and lion's mane. They've been scientifically proven to help with focus. Um, the bacopa actually helps with impulse control. The ashwagandha for mental clarity has been life-changing for the brain fog that I experience and the fatigue, uh, particularly that I personally get in the afternoon. Which um, is from the hormone treatment. Yeah, from my hormone treatment, but honestly, I've always been <laughs> the kind of person who thrives on caffeine. Her spirit animal is sloth. Yeah. <laughs> so Grace needs any help getting awake she could take. Yeah, and so just this, knowing I'm putting so many things in my body that are actually good for me and are going to give me the same performance that caffeine will, but with added benefits and I don't get that crash at the end. Um, it's pretty easy to get addicted to this stuff. So check them out. The link will be in our bio and you won't regret it. What's super left? recently, <laughs> super recently, yeah, what's left? Um, I began provisioning with my really good friend, Peter, on Sailing Vessel Kessel, who you guys are gonna meet in our videos. We actually made friends with him back when we were up in Pinyasco going through our hard times. But uh, he's never provisioned before, and you know, he's a single guy. He <laughs> needs a little help and guidance. He needs a little help and guidance. <laughs> and, and Grace has done this so many times, the big provision run. Yeah. Like, we've provisioned Calico so many times in the last six years. So. Yeah. And Bill, you know, Bill's obviously just always, always busy with all the things. So, uh, him and I started, we made a good dent uh, last couple days. We did a Costco run and another run, but we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be doing more. Um, because the boat is so blown up. <laughs> Between yeah. all the stuff, all the food that came on board and all the spares and parts came at the same time because Grace just got back from yeah. the state. So, and, uh, we and get boats a lot, everywhere. Yeah, stuff everywhere. We get a lot of questions about provisioning. Um, so I know that's like a topic that a lot of people enjoy so we've been filming all that in great detail and we're gonna that'll probably come out next week um, after this one uh, and we'll share just a little bit more on my strategy and you know things things of that nature because the Pacific is gonna be the most remote cruising we've done in terms of the longest like I think so yes yeah so <clears throat> you know it, we're a relatively small boat and we're not gonna be eating out at all yeah there's no so restaurants we need to have all the the basic things and the, for me the hardest thing about provisioning for that kind of cruising experience is that right now we're living the opposite life so we're in a marina we can go grab tacos you know it's not quite how it is in the states but the bottom line is like you're, you're not making bread from scratch or we're not you know yeah. um, a lot of the things we enjoy eating out on the anchor we don't eat while we're in a slip um, for lots of different reasons. So kind of putting your heads, your mind into a different headspace where, hey, we're gonna be doing a lot of potlucks where we all go to a boat and bring one dish. And you know, yeah, it's just, yeah. It's, it's quite, it's also, quite different. I also would say like variety becomes a really key thing when you're in a remote yeah. area. Yeah, Like you that. suddenly get a hankering for like making Chinese food when you, and you yeah. need like vinegar oil or, you know, it just, you, yeah. when you're living so remotely and your diet can become so limited because you're stuck with the stores you have, that makes it a challenge to have like all these funky ingredients for whatever you think you're going to want to make at some point in some remote island, which we yeah. always wind up doing, and which I make different cuisines. Exactly. And one, one big thing, um, 
that I'm just gonna quickly share. <laughs> I keep checking my watch because we'll just we'll just hang out with you guys all day. Um, is Kaza? I was talking to Kaza a few a couple weeks ago, and she was saying that because you know vegetables are so limited, like the green stuff, basically. Like you'll be able to get potatoes and onions and lots of pamplemousse, grapefruits and fruits, but the vegetables is so limited. Basically, until you get to Tahiti, I mean, we're not gonna we're not gonna see anything. We're not gonna get much. So she actually suggested that we try sprouting growing our own sprouts because then that gives you nutritional benefits and the crunch, crunch yeah. so I have my seeds I have my mason jars and I'm going to be experimenting with that yeah so I'm looking forward to that it's gonna be new and different and fun uh, and actually speaking of Kaza uh, Brian and Kaza and sweet little Sierra may or may not still be in FP French Polynesia when we get there. It we really, certainly hope so, but we certainly hope so. But it just timing's a little tight. We got to see when when and weather window comes. Yeah. So this year, because of what Bill was talking about with the El Ni the El Nino moving into the El Nina, La Nina, uh, La Nina, everything's just delayed. So it's March twenty seventh, and there hasn't been a viable window yet. This, I think they said next Wednesday, which would be a week from today. So it'd be like April third. Yeah. Which is when we, that was about the earliest we ever anticipated crossing. Uh, the advice was also not to go in the first window. Yeah. Because they basically want to see the pattern establish and the models predicting that right. And they want to see it sort of filling in and not, you know, having a phantom, you know, because we're chasing forecasts that are weeks out for the southern hemisphere. Like, we're, we're not going to be there for two weeks from when we leave here. So you want to see it established before you make the jump. Uh, so that's part of it. Yeah. So um, they're going to be heading off to Australia just around the time that we arrive. So we'll see if we catch up we catch up i'm sure um, we will once we're on that side of the once we're on that side of the world i'm sure we'll catch up though yeah. somehow we'll yeah. want to do some travels to australia and new zealand even if the boat doesn't go there i think we'll want to see that because we're on the side of the world why not yeah the two other things we've also been kind of working on here and there over the last two months is our ditch bag yep and our med kit one of our patrons offered to get all of the antibiotics all of the things that you want to carry um, for emergency purposes. We're super grateful super to him. That, yeah. The yeah, other yeah. thing we have is um, a new life raft. Yeah, we have a superior life-saving four-person raft. Um, we had met the owners at the boat show. It's a family-run company, and they're just like really cool guys to work with. Yeah. Uh, so, and we, ran, we mounted it on our rail, because life rafts are actually fairly heavy. Uh, they're like 80, 90 pounds packed. So I, if something happened to me, I couldn't picture Grace being able to get a 90-pound raft over the life run, up, over the lifelines in a seaway. No. It's a challenge. So ours is mounted on the on the stern rail, and all you do is pull a quick release release pin, and the raft drops in. The painter is already tied to the boat. It's a 36-foot painter, and you pull it, and then we're good. And that brings me to um, whatever you guys want to know more about, whatever topics, questions you have on any of the things we've talked about, or anything else that we haven't thought of. Um, let us know in the comments because um, there's just like so many topics. Yeah, there's so much, and it's it's always hard to know exactly what um, people are interested in. People are interested in, so we we love to get feedback and yeah. Let um, us know what part of the prep you guys were curious about because yeah, we wanted to have this talk because a lot of this won't be shown up in film. Like we, we didn't film ourselves spending two days organizing a ditch bag or. Organizing yeah. them, what we need for medical supplies, or mm -hmm. what spares we need to compile. Like, mm -hmm. there's a lot of that behind the scenes, just isn't filmable work. It's just mm -hmm. like work and research that goes in. That um, happens organically, honestly. You know, you we're just talking to someone or whatever, and then you know we make notes and we get back to it. But yeah, it's very challenging to film. Yeah, so stuff. we thought it'd be useful to have like a talk, so you could kind of see what the behind the scenes for what has been basically. Minus the heavy boat work for eight months, it's basically it's been two months of logistical management of mm -hmm. spares and parts and then it's just, it's, yeah. logis it's, a, it's a very big logistical challenge. It is. But I have to say, like, on a true Calico Skies note, um, the people that we have met in La Cruz, I will be taking with me in my heart for sure. forever. We have met some of the most, like, the salt of the earth, um, just the, the people, the reason really why we do, why, oh, why we, do. we cruise. Yeah. Well, I, have um, and years, I don't yeah. know why, but I wasn't really expecting that. I think because in my mind, La Cruz is just like our work, our work spot, right? It's where we're going to get all our stuff, the hardware run, store runs, the food runs, like, not the experience, you know? Like, the experience in my mind starts when we get on the water, but the total opposite has been true. <laughs> like, the experience has started here we've you know we've quite got the crew. quite the crew we've got people that we're going with so we're like all talking about what we're going to be doing and then we've just got people that are here and have other plans that 
maybe you know in the future we will or won't hopefully yeah, like, we will like, Most our, likely our, will. like our stack pack came and garrett from salt and tar who's built a whole boat he came over for two days and you know, help me with that stack pack and... Well, I was in Arizona. Because I was, I was by myself, so, yeah. you know, it's a sort of a multi-person operation, and I don't know, he's so much better of tools than I am. <laughs> like, I could have done it, but, you know, like, he's someone who's a, like a true craftsman. As a, I'm just sort of like a MacGyver kind of fix anything I got it, but it's never pretty. Yeah. So, it's been really helpful to just have people like that stopping by. Our boat's become sort of like a hub of the marina. There seems to be, <laughs> there's always people hanging around our boat drinking beers, watching us work, or like so. Yeah. It's yeah. been a it's been a really special period, and all our friends are on the same dock by some by some miracle. So like it's just like walk around, <laughs> people come over, we all hang out. Uh, so yeah. it's been a really fun period. It's been really busy, but it's been a really awesome time yeah. here. Yeah, and so we're gonna let the good times roll for another two weeks, three weeks, two or three, probably three weeks. Yeah, um, so we are targeting. Uh, I guess like it's April 10th, 11th, like that's our ideal date, it's all weather dependent obviously, but that's what we are targeting to leave, so that's literally in like two and a half weeks, so uh, yep. this is pretty close to real time obviously, yes. it will be real time, it's we are a couple very, days old. We are in a new uh, reality for our, for our channel of being basically up to date, which I think I've said this before on video, I love it personally. I don't. <laughs> makes Bill very uncomfortable. Makes me very uncomfortable not having a <laughs> cache of content, but Grace loves it for some reason. Chaos theory over here. Uh, yeah, I, th I thrive in chaos. You thrive, you thrive in chaos, yeah. Uh, yeah, so um, super excited to take you guys with us on this upcoming passage, and yeah, give us your feedback. And, and don't forget to um, click like, subscribe. Yeah, actually, Bing, put we, on the bells. we've been talking about this a lot and not saying this on video, but we've been hearing, we've gotten so many comments and messages from people who have found that they're unsubscribed to our channel, so I don't know if YouTube's been messing with us doing something in the background probably <laughs> but if you're not subscribed please subscribe please, please subscribe the, the bell really helps us, it us makes out a big difference <laughs> and thank you so much for being here and following our journey and we will see you next week bye guys love you